We studied uh, how insects detect and produce signals. Animals like dogs and dolphins, um, bats, produce sound either for communication or they're able also to detect these signals. But insects uh, can detect ultrasonic signals. These animals have uh, developed the capability of, of detecting ultrasonic signals. They've had a long time in evolution. Insects have been there for millions of years and they found the right solutions for detection, for sound for instance. And that is inspiring me because I know that the more we look at it, the more we find solutions that we as human beings or engineers um, haven't found yet. And that process of discovery is really what, uh, what I find very interesting and inspiring. The two animals I'm holding in my hand are two katydids uh, from uh, Colombia, the Colombian rainforest. We discovered that these animals have a heating system very similar, that works very similar to the mammalian heating system. The ears are located in the four legs, just right there. So what fascinates me is that these animals actually have a cochlear system. So uh, we have now a new open field to study the cochlear system in non-mammalian animals. What we do is shine a laser beam on that set of ears and the light shining on it will bounce back to the detector of the laser. And that carries information about the vibration of the ear. So what we have to do simply is to play some sounds to the animal or some music. And by shining the laser, we can actually measure very precisely the effect that sound has on its, on its ears and how they vibrate. What we learn from this research is indeed how to design perhaps better microphones or smaller microphones. Now we know it's possible to have a complicated auditory process in a very small volume. And that could have impact on the design of new hearing aids or new detectors for different devices. The male in this species uh, sings at more or less 23 kilohertz, so he's uh, a little bit out of our hearing range, and they produce uh, musical calls. This is one of the species actually being studied in the lab. We are studying uh, how they produce the signals, so the biophysics of sound generation. So they, they produce the signals basically with the four wings. Uh, they have a specialized structures. One wing has a scraper or plectrum, and the other wing has a file with cut cuticular teeth. So the plectrum goes down the file and produces like scra scrapes and produce vibrations that these vibrations are amplified by wing membranes. The understanding of these uh, uh, modern species, of so living species, the biomechanics of singing in these animals has helped us to recreate the call of a Jurassic katydid. Our exhibit uh, uh, at the Royal Society Summer uh, Exhibition this year is about uh, ultrasonic hearing in katydids. So people will have the opportunity to hear uh, how a uh, Jurassic cricket used to sing, and people will have the, also the chance to uh, hear what an insect is hearing. So we'll have, a, we'll have a setup there with laser vibrometry, and we will be able to convert the signals of the katydid into audible signals for humans. By understanding more about how animals sense the world, we can also understand more about what they see from their own ecology. If we get an insight into that, we will understand that ecology and that relationship in the living world. 
animals, plants, fungi, and the whole environment. I think we are at the stage now where we need to understand more of that in order not to disturb it too much or restore it the way it could actually work. So in the bigger picture, I think a work in sensory biology as well as in ecology and biophysics actually can inspire us to respect nature a bit more and uh, help it work as, as we know it should be working.